cavalry horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Uncle Ed, how did you escape? Hmm? Oh. Oh, I, I escaped all right. <laughs> you don't worry about that. But how? Weren't the Indians closing in on you? Yes, they were. But, uh, like I said, that uh, uh, the night was pitch dark. Without the flaming arrows, you couldn't see your hand before your face. Well, sir, just as them redskins was about to make their final charge, a thunderstorm come up. Put out the flaming arrows, and under cover of darkness, I picked up the wounded lieutenant, and... Uncle Ed! How many times have I told you not to whittle in my living room? Just look at this floor. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Laura. I just, just kind of forgot. Uncle Ed was telling me how he saved the fort from an Indian attack. I can imagine. But that's no excuse for you letting him make a mess like this. Now, just a minute, Laura. I don't need no ten-year-old child to nursemaid me. What am I going to do with you? You drag dirt all over the house. You, you whittle on the floor. You, you spill crumbs and tobacco. And last week, you burned a hole in my best blanket. Well, if I'm not wanted here, I'll, I'll just pack up and move out. For heaven's sakes, don't be so touchy. I'm not touchy. I just don't like to be treated like a useless old man. And I'm not accustomed to sitting around doing nothing. They didn't want me why they asked me to come and live with them. I'll fix them. I'll stay up here in these mountains until they get good and worried. Susan's the only one that gives two hoots what... What do you think, Tonto? Them trying to cover tracks, Kim Sumby, but me think them come this way. I think you're right. Too bad the ground's so hard that we can't... Don't move! Either of you. Drop your guns. You make mistake, old I man. I said drop your guns! If you think we're outlaws... Why, of course you're outlaws. I'm taking it to the sheriff. I wear a mask because I don't wish to be recognized. I'll bet you don't. It's probably a price on your head. Go on, get moving. What about our horses? Sheriff Gray can come get them after you're locked up. Maybe Silver not want to be left behind. I suspect you're right. Come on, boy. You dirty owl hoot. Sorry, but you brought this on yourself. We're not bandits. As a matter of fact, we're after three outlaws who escaped from the territorial prison. You mean Lefty Martin and his men? That's right. Glory be. You think they're around here someplace? I'm quite sure they are. Now, if you promise to behave yourself, I'll return your rifle. You sure, mister? Here you are, old timer. I'm no old timer. I'm just as good as it was 20 years ago. Well, I'm sure you are. I meant no offense. Do you see strangers ride this way? No, nobody comes up in these mountains since the mines played out. You probably know Lefty is a killer. The two men with him, Jake Logan and Mike Carney, are almost as bad. If you notice anything suspicious around here, tell the sheriff right away. Oh, I'll do that. Thanks. I hope we meet again under more pleasant circumstances. All right. Adios. So long. Gee, Hosephat, wait till I tell him about this. But, Dad... Susan, I've explained a dozen times Uncle Ed's too old to herd cattle. He's just too stubborn to admit it. Here he comes. I don't scold him for being late. Well, if he wants to eat cold food, that's his privilege. Folks, have I got news. You know them three convicts that escaped from prison? Well, sir, they're hiding around here someplace. Oh, no. Are you sure? Absolutely. We should have left our money in the bank. What if those thugs break in and... Nonsense, Laurel. Who told you these men are in the neighborhood? A masked man, riding on a big white horse. He come up to me while I was... A masked man? Yeah, and there was a, an engine with him. Oh, Uncle Ed. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What for? For telling a cock and bull story like that. But it's true. A man just has so much patience. Now, don't make me lose what little I have left. I saw that masked man and the engine as plain as the nose in your face. I talked to him. All right, have it your way. Now sit down and eat your supper. You still don't believe me? No, I don't. And while we're on the subject, Laura tells me you've been frightening Susan again with a lot of those nonsensical tales about killings and scalpings and such. What's wrong with learning a child something about the history of this country? 
I wouldn't call those tall tales of yours history. No, I suppose you wouldn't. You sit there all safe and snug, and you forget if men like me hadn't fought and, and struggled and, and died, this place would still be a wilderness. I'm not asking for much, but at least you could show us some respect. I had no idea that, that he'd take it so hard. No, you'd, you'd better stay here. Uncle Ed. Yes, child? I just want to tell you I love you. Oh, bless you, sweetheart. And your stories don't frighten me one bit. They just don't understand, do they? That's because they're grown-ups. There's lots of things that grown-ups don't understand. It's no use, Otto. It'll be dark in another five minutes. I uh, mean, not like to give up. Neither do I. Lefty and his men have done a good job of covering up their trail. Ah, uh, when them go down into valley where ground's soft, it'd not be so easy to hide trail. I suspect they'll stay wherever they are long enough to rest themselves and their horses. They've been riding hard for a week. Ah, them need rest before them cross Badlands to Mexican border. Yes, and they'll also need to take along food and water. Ah, them not have money to buy food. Them have to steal. Exactly. We'd better ride into Brockton and ask Sheriff Gray to warn the ranchers in the vicinity that Lefty may attempt a raid. Let's go. It's almost too quiet around here. Let's go. Wait a second. Oh, this confounded bird is sticking in my leg. Well, don't take all night. All right, Lefty. Yeah. Come on in. If there's a dog, he's deaf as a post. Next time I'll leave you at the hideout. I can't see anything with this blasted eye. Can we risk a light? I guess we'll have to. red-handed, didn't I? Give us a break, mister. We just want something to eat. You're lying. You come here for the money. We were only looking for food. I still think you're lying. You come here for my nephew's money. I don't know how you found out about it, but I... Say, what's going on here? Who are you? Don't move, either of you. Uncle Ed! Shut up. Stay where you are. You've got a nerve breaking in here and threatening... I said but... shut up. Are you hurt, Uncle Ed? You clumsy oaf. What'd you come busting in for? You can settle that later. Right now, I want the money. What money? The old man said you had a lot of money around the house. Well, he, uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's old and kind of, well, he's kind of feeble-minded. Feeble-minded? Why, you young... Uncle Ed. What? Oh. Oh, yes, mister. Uh, here lately, I do get things kind of mixed up. Not this time, Grandpa. Where is it? Honestly, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Come off of it, Buster. Do you want your wife to be a widow? Well, you wouldn't. What have I got to lose? No. Well? It's in a box in the bottom drawer of that chest. Thanks. Take a look, Jake. Please, mister. This is my fault. I should have kept my mouth shut. Shoot me, do anything to me, but don't take their money. It's all they've got. For five years, they've been working... You know, you're they've... breaking my heart. Frank, Laura, I... Here he is, boss. Chuck full of green. Good. Get in there. Hurry up! Hurry up!
you're satisfied. I'm sorry, Frank. Honest, I... You're not going after them alone. One hero in the family's enough. I'm getting the sheriff. I'll be with you, Frank. You're staying here. You've caused enough trouble already. I need better check on Susan. Look, mister. I appreciate you coming here to warn me about these crooks. But I had an official report. The three of them were seen at Rose Creek yesterday, heading west. Sheriff, they hadn't been near Rose Creek. Whoever turned in that report was mistaken. I've heard a lot about you, mister. And this letter you showed me from the governor says you're on the side of the law. But I can't throw the whole countryside into a panic just on your say-so. When people are in danger, they should be told about it. The more people know about crooks, the better chance to catch them. All right. I'll go see Walker Stevenson and ask him to. Sheriff, I've been robbed. What? Two men just broke into my place and... Who's that? Don't worry, he's no outlaw. But he's masked. I know, go on. Well, these two men broke in and threatened to kill me unless I told where we kept our savings. They took every cent we own, almost a thousand dollars. Do you recognize any of these three men? Why, sure, that's one of them. This man looks like the other one. Lefty Mott and Jake Logan. Huh? Guess I owe you an apology. I'll round up a posse. They're probably heading for the border. These men take any food with them? They loaded some in a sack, but evidently in their excitement over the money, they forgot about it. They couldn't reach the border without food. What about Carney? They'd hardly leave without him. You think Carney go to a hideout and then go back to get him? That's a reasonable guess, Tonto. Then let's get going. This moonlight won't last much longer. There's a storm coming up. While you organize a posse, Tonto and I'll go on ahead. We may be able to pick up their trail before the storm breaks. Good enough. Come on. Did you find them? The rainstorm wiped out the trail. Our money's gone, Laura. We might as well face it. Well, we're still strong and healthy. Honey, any other woman would have bawled me out for not keeping our money in the bank. We'll all feel much better after we've had some breakfast. Susan, will you go and fetch Uncle Ed? Sure, Mom. At least the old man was right about one thing. What was that? It was Lefty Mott who robbed us. And Ed did see a mask man. You're joking. No, I saw him myself. He was in this shirt. Mommy, Uncle Ed's gone. Gone? I found this on his bed. Frank and Laura, I know you're never going to forgive me for what I done last night, so I'm going after them robbers myself. When I get your money, I'll send it to you, because I'm not coming back where I'm not wanted. Tell Susan I'll write her as soon as I get a job. I'm not as old and useless as some people think. He's not coming back. Oh, yes, he is, Susan. He's just angry and upset. Because... You were mean to him. You scolded him all the time. And you wouldn't believe his stories. Now, as soon as I've had some sleep, I'll go and look for him. Even if you find him, he won't come back. You were mean to him. Oh, please don't cry. Mommy, I love Wendell Ed so much. I'll try and find him. <laughs> That old man we see yesterday. I wonder what he's doing way up here. Oh, so it's you again. Yes, we meet again. If you're still after them bandit fellows, you're just wasting your time. We found their trail last night before it rained. I'm sure they're hiding up here in these hills. Sure they are. And they got the money they stole from my nephew. So you're Frank Adams, Uncle. Yeah. I'm not proud of it. I'll get his money back, all right. But you won't catch me going back to live with him and be insulted and, and laughed at and, and treated like some no-count old fool. Well, if you feel that way about it, why are you so anxious to get his money back for him? Because it's my fault it got stolen. Besides, I'm the only one to know where it is. You know where money is? Of course I do. But I'm not telling anybody. I see. I don't mean to interfere, sir, but don't you think it would be a good idea to forget this quarrel with Frank and go home? You don't believe me. I didn't say that, but I'm sure Frank will be worried about you. And, well, at your age... My age has nothing to do with it. Them bandits had burrs all over the trouser legs. And those kind of burrs only grow in one place. If that's true, why didn't you tell the sheriff about it? Because I didn't remember about the burrs till later, that's why. You show us where burrs grow? Oh, no, you don't. I'm going to capture those bandits myself. And I'm going to prove to people that I'm not as useless as they think I am. As much as I admire your courage, I think we'd better take you home. What are you talking about? If you do know where Lefty and his men are hiding, and you go there alone, you'll only be killed. 
Oh, I can take care of myself. It's too great a risk. Are you serious? I mean, about taking me back to town? It's for your own good, sir. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, suppose I let you go along with me. Uh, well, what about that? I'm sorry, but these men are dangerous. Tano and I are used to dealing with killers, but... But I'd just be in the way, is that it? No, but you might get hurt. If you think you can tell us where these killers are hiding, and we succeed in capturing them, I'll make sure you get the reward and full credit. A lot of good that'd do. I'm sorry, but it's the best I can offer. All right. The birds I told you about grow near a shack at the Silver X mine. Now, you follow this trail and turn left when you get to a big rock that's shaped like a man's head. Thank you, sir. We'll see you later. All right. Why don't Jake hurry up with those berries he's supposed to be picking? Heard you were sick of berries. Well, they're better than nothing. If I'd been with you last night, I'd have brought back some food. There wasn't any point in all three of us going. And quit your griping. A thousand bucks will buy a lot more than food. How long are we going to stay cooped up here, starving to death? A couple of days. Things quiet down. Cover me from the window. What happened? Here's the wonder. You dirty, thieving cutthroats. It's the old man. Did you have to plug him? Someone might have heard the shot. He's going to plug you. Let's get him inside. Oh, oh take it easy. Who's he? He's the old coot that tried to give us trouble last night. Well, how do you know where to come? That's what we're going to find out. Go out and watch the trail. If anybody heard that shot, they might get nosy. Right. Leave them here. Get him down. Get him down. No way out of Canyon. Maybe we take wrong turn. No, Tom. I suspect we've been tricked. Well, what do you think? I think the old man led us on a wild goose chase. Come on. Time, you old fool. How did you know we were here? If you had any sense, you could figure it for yourself. Did you tell anyone where you were coming? Maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Well, what's wrong, boy? Silver smell trouble. Maybe somebody wait around bending trail. We'll leave Silver and Scout here and circle around on foot. Let me take rope. Kill me. I haven't got much to live for anyway. I'll give you just three seconds to start talking. They've caught the old man, all right. We'll use the tap on the window trick. One, two, three. What's that? Go look. There we are. You're covered. Now drop your gun. Stay back or I'll shoot the old man. Stay where you are, Injun. Drop your gun so I'll let him have it. Let him shoot me. I ain't worth anything, and the money's here, and you can take it back to Frank. Does it mean that much to you? Drop your guns. I'm warning you. They're going to kill us all anyway. That's right, Grandpa. You'll hang for it, Lefty? They'll have to catch me first. Keep them covered, Tano. You hurt badly? 
Oh, you shouldn't have taken such a chance. You should have let him shot me. Well, I don't agree with you. If I hadn't lied to you and been such a stubborn old fool, none of this should happen. Forget it, Ed. Right now, I want to tie up these men and have Tyler look at that shoulder. All right. Well, Mr. Andrews, now that Lefty and his men are back in prison and Frank's money's been returned, Tonto and I must be on our way. You sure have been wonderful. What about reward, Commissary? There's a thousand dollars reward for recapturing those crooks. Tonto and I convinced the sheriff that you should receive it all. Oh, I don't deserve any of it. You pioneers who made this country possible deserve more than that. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. And I won't forget what you said about not being so cantankerous and touchy about things. From now on, I'm just going to relax and enjoy being my age. And we're going to see that you do enjoy it. That doesn't mean that you can loaf. I'll need a lot of help running this place, and I'm counting on you. Bye, Susan. You take good care of your uncle. I shall. Adios, my friends. Goodbye. Well? Uncle Ed, if you're going to be different from now on, does that mean you can't tell me any more stories? Oh, bless you, child. Of course not. In fact, I'm going to tell you a story right now. A story about the kindest, bravest, most wonderful man that ever lived. Is that how you saved the fort from an Indian pack? Oh, shucks, child. This story isn't about me. This is a story about the Lone Ranger. Oh, no!